someone recently suggested that melting glaciers must surely prove global warming is true. It is a common belief, after all. And glaciers, well, they're a visible phenomenon. And it all sounds quite logical. Which is why the mainstream reports on it, well, and society gobbles it up. But tonight, we're going to do a little science. And we're going to debunk that notion based on facts. During the global warming scare, and as glaciers recede in Alaska, scientists are finding the remains of forests previously buried by the ice. Now this picture is an example at the Mendenhall Glacier, where carbon dating reveals the trees are between 1,200 and 1,400 years old. Other older trees have also been found. Exactly the same thing is happening elsewhere in Alaska, at the famous Exit Glacier. The trees there are a similar age, and you're looking at one. Can you believe that tree is 1,300 years old? These are not just old trees, but remnants of great forests. It is clearly evident that the glaciers then were smaller than they are now during the climate catastrophe. And it's not only Alaska. At the other end of the continent, in Patagonia, more buried trees are turning up. Though these trees are younger, they're still up to 500 years old. And a similar pattern can be found around the world. Now, did you know that beginning in the 16th century, alpine glaciers began to advance down valleys? We know this because of the wealth of historical accounts from the time. This was, of course, the beginning of the period known as the Little Ice Age. Historian Brian Fagan describes in his book, The Little Ice Age, just what a horrifying calamity this was for those that lived. In the 16th century, the occasional traveler would remark on the poverty and suffering of those who lived on the marginal lands in the glacier's shadow. At that time, Chamonix was an obscure, poverty-stricken parish in a poor country of barren mountains, never free of glaciers and frosts. Half of the year is no sun. The corn is gathered in the snow and is so moldy it has to be heated in the oven. Even animals were said to refuse bread made from Chamonix wheat. Avalanches caused by low temperatures and deep snowfall were a constant hazard. In 1575, a visitor described the village as a place covered with glaciers. Often, the fields are entirely swept away and the wheat blown into the woods and into the glaciers. In 1589, the Alalan Glacier in Switzerland, which you're looking at, descended so low that it blocked the South Valley, forming a lake. The moraine broke a few months later, sending floods downstream. Seven years later, 70 people died when similar floods from the Getras Glacier submerged the town of Martigny. As the glaciers 
relentlessly pushed down slope. Thousands of acres of farmland were ruined. And many villages were left uninhabitable, such as La Boy, where government officials noted where there are still six houses, all uninhabited, save two, in which live some wretched women and children, above and promise nothing but the destruction of the houses and lands which still remain. Eventually, the village was completely abandoned. The same official visited the hamlet of La Rosarie in 1616 and found the great glacier of La Rosarie every now and then goes bounding and thrashing or descending. There have been destroyed 43 jeuna of land with nothing but stone and eight houses. Seven barns and five little granges have been entirely ruined and destroyed. Alpine glaciers, which had already advanced steadily between 1546 and 1590, moved aggressively forward again between 1600 and 1616. Villages that had flourished since medieval times were now in danger or already destroyed. During the long period of glacial retreat and relative quiet in earlier times, opportunistic farmers had cleared land within a kilometer of what seemed to them to be stationary ice. Now, their descendants paid the price, with their villages and livelihoods threatened. Between 1627 and 1633, Chamonix lost a third of all of its land through avalanches, snow, glaciers, and flooding, and the remaining hectares were under constant threat. In 1642, the Debois Glacier advanced over a musket shot every day, even in August. By this time, people near the ice front well, they were starving, planting only oats and little barley in fields that were under snow for most of the year. Their forefathers had paid their tithes in wheat. Now they obtained but one harvest in three, and even grain rotted after harvesting. The people here were so badly fed, they were dark and wretched, and seemed only half alive. In 1715, the village of Le Plus-Ubal vanished under the glacier after it caused a landslide. The glacial high tide in the Alps came around 1750, and gradually the glaciers began their retreat, much to the relief of the people who lived there. Glaciologists also know that similar advances were taking place on glaciers all around the world, including Alaska, Greenland, the Canadian Rockies, South America, the Caucasus, the Himalayas, and China. Even New Zealand did not escape. Brian Fagan writes, in New Zealand, the Franz Josef Glacier was a mere pocket of ice on a frozen snowfield nine centuries ago. Then, Little Ice Age cooling began, and the glacier thrust down slope into the valley below, smashing into the great rainforests that flourished there, felling giant trees like matchsticks. By the early 18th century, Franz Joseph's face was within three kilometers of the Pacific Ocean. The high tide of glacial advance at Franz Joseph came between the late 17th century and the picture you see here on the right, 1908. Just as it did in the European Alps. Now, we all know that the same glaciers which grew massively a few centuries ago are now retreating. The media is using it to push a narrative of man-made global warming, which is nonsense because we just showed you that recently 
2,000 years ago, it was much, much warmer. There were forests under these glaciers that are now retreating. And no one is telling you about it. Surprising though it might sound, explorers were already mapping Alaska's glaciers in the 18th century. This map shows the glacier edge progressively retreating after the peak in 1760. Here, completely ice covered to the front of Glacier Bay and now all the way back here. Most of the glacier has disappeared even before 1900. Whilst glacier loss has been relatively small in recent years, massive losses happened 200 years ago. Between 1800 and 1900, epic losses occurred. And the Alps is a similar story. The Rhone Glacier reached its maximum extent in the late 18th century. And according to H.H. H. Lamb, had already receded half a mile by 1870. Most had disappeared by 1950. And the modern day retreat of glaciers, well, obviously, is part of a larger cycle. Indeed, we find evidence of that cycle going back long before the Middle Ages. We've shared this for half a decade on the channel. Magnetic Reversal News is a new channel, but we've shared this over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project Time Immemorial. Now, Lamb, for instance, claims that glaciers in the Alps and Norway were advancing between 800 and 400 BC. So anytime you have a cooling here, obviously you're going to get advances. And from 1000 BC to zero, it was very cold. Lamb also should suggest that glaciers advanced again around AD 600. In this cold period. In between times, of course, the same glaciers also retreated. We have Roman warm. We have the medieval warm. We have the modern warm. We have the Minoan warm that we're not even going back that far to talk about. But we have glacial periods time and time again with advancing glaciers, retreating glaciers, advancing and retreating. But the time just a thousand years before now and 1500 years before now was much warmer than today in these glacial regions. Based on everything we just showed you, unequivocal evidence. <clears throat> now, whether man-made warming has played any part in modern glacial retreat, we know these three key pieces. And stick with us. One, most of the retreat since the 18th century occurred before any possible impacts from humans. Two, Glaciers were smaller than now in the Middle Ages, well before global warming theory is purported to begin. And three, there is nothing unprecedented or alarming about the current state of the world's glaciers. All of this is common knowledge amongst glaciologists and paleoclimatologists like myself. But for some reason, the world of climate science does not want the public to know about the facts. The climate optimum was 6,000 BC, 8,000 years ago, and the temperature has been dropping off since then. 
It's that insane. Ancient trees emerge from frozen forests. Well, and the narrative becomes quite clear day by day. Hope you got something out of the video. This video was brought to you by Hemp Lucid. And they're having a huge Black Friday sale that begins now. 40% off TH free, THC free sales. And the entire, well, 20-day event is going to be big. They're going to give up to 60% off all their products over at Hemp Lucid. So if you like Hemp Lucid and you want to change your life, download the free calendar and get the best deals ever to survive and thrive in the future. Hope you got something out of the video. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world where it took me just four hours to set up the narrative I just gave you with all the pictures, all the scientific links below, all the corroborating evidence, all my experience as a geologist for over 30 years. I hope I made it palatable for you and others to understand well and to begin a journey into waking up into what is actually the true nature of our planet and natural climate variability. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Check out Hemp Lucid for their Black Friday sale. And you don't have to worry at all about any Christmas gifts. It'll be there on time because it comes from, well, America. <laughs> and that's a boom. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. We'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.